think you're not alone in that sentiment. Yeah, I, I, th <laughs> I think that's very true. Okay, let's get ready with some warm up moments. Um, I'm going to keep the mic on for the time being and so we can with a small group it's easy and if we start making too much noise then uh, perhaps later on I can, uh, I can shut it down. So um, on your own pace uh, we're going to start lunging forward and first keeping the upper body straight so you you can kind of like first take just a short step and bend bend your knee a little bit don't bring your upper body forward and try to keep your knee in place so you're not going here but you're just going there so that's the little little warm up for the knees. And then bit by bit, the step, or the, now is actually a step, it's not a lunge, but the step becomes a lunge. So we start to go a little bit further. And a long step now. When the step comes longer, let's bring the upper body forward as well. And from now on, when you lunge, touch your toes. Obviously the front foot <laughs> goes without saying, I think. And when you do it, it's the opposite hand that touches the toe. Are you touching the toe? Yeah. Okay. Now let's see, can you go a little bit further? So go slow, try to touch the floor in front of the foot. Can you get there? Yeah. Good. And then from front of the foot, keep going. And now you're gonna go next to the foot. So it's not here, but it's here. So it's a little bit more twist in the upper body. A bit more work for your balance. Oof. I'm already losing it. So the side of the upper body is twisting and working harder here. Very common motion when you are winding up for your swing. Five more, four, three, two, and one. Okay, good. All right, uh, let's go into a squat, a wide squat. And let's first um, keep your toes a little bit going out with your knees and drop your upper body. And you can lean on your thighs if this feels comfortable and okay. And just stay there for a while. A little hip opener. and then come up and then go a little bit less slow and then start extending one leg at a time. Bring that inner thigh. And I like to do this with just holding my knees, it's kind of like support or just above the knees. So I'm kind of like having a bit of support, just less heavy for the legs. Obviously, if you keep your arms out, it's more of a balancing exercise and a little bit heavier for your legs as well. And if you don't feel it, you have to go a little bit further. Okay, let's come up, shake it off, and bring right, your right foot on your left knee. And lower your position, find the balance, and Drop it enough to feel the stretch in your outer hip. Good. 
Good, slowly come up. Ooh, let me crank you again. It's funny how they sometimes are very verbal. Okay, let's switch. Take the left over the right. Find your balance. Make sure your weight is nicely on your heel and toes and the ball of the foot, side of the foot, so it's really connected to the floor. Focus on that connection and bring that bended knee low enough so you feel the stretch. Okay, slowly come up. Okay. Okay, a little bit upper body rotation. Grab your racket. And we're gonna do a little side stretch first. So keep your arms extended in front of the top of your head, holding the racket between your palms. And then, and you can do this also the way that the lower hand kind of pulls the racket down. And then when you keep that arm extended, the top arm, it really works well for your side. And Keep the stretch on one side at least for one full breath or even two. Good, and then let's make the motion a circle above your head. So still having your arms extended and slowly rotating in one direction. Really focus on the movement of the shoulders. So the shoulders are very mobile here. It's not that much hip or other area. And then switch direction. Okay, bring your arms down and shake your shoulders a little bit. And we're gonna go a little bit focused on the lower back. <clears throat> so we're gonna do a couple of good mornings. So bring your upper body low, arms hanging heavy, head hanging heavy, and then come into a horizontal position. So not all the way up and slowly down again. And halfway. And halfway. One more time. Let's hang down here, eyes closed for four more breaths. So make sure you keep your shoulders, arms hanging loose, head is heavy. Slowly come up. Okay. A little side twist. <clears throat> uh, arms in a 90 degree angle. Racket in front of you between the palms. And then little pump on both sides. One, two. And when you're on the side, look over your shoulder. And try to see if you're having in similar or symmetric equal rotation on both sides. So I feel like my left side is tighter. I feel like I can't go as far on the left as I do on the right. What about you? Even. Okay, even is good. That says that it's balanced. Okay, 
<clears throat> okay. Any requests? Racket work, you're almost back on court, so. Warm up wrist. Warm up wrist? Yeah. yeah. Warm up wrist. Okay. You can do it, well, you can, we can do it without the racket. So if you cross your hands like this and start rolling your wrists like this. These movements are really funny, like very often, like one direction goes really naturally, but then try to reverse <laughs> and it feels very like illogical, like, hey. Okay. And then going here, you're extending your arm and pulling your fingers back, keeping that thumb out, and then doing the opposite. So pulling from the back of your hand, so it's really stretching the forearm muscles here. Yeah. So one thing, good thing to work on the wrist and, and grip strength are those, uh, how do you call them? Those little, uh, little machines <laughs> with a little spiral. Yeah, the yeah, I know what you're talking about. yeah, those are really effective. And you, if you do like a couple of times, like 20, tw like a squeezes a day, it automatically starts to activate the whole forearm and the, the hand and wrist area just to prevent all kinds of nasty injuries. Okay, um, what about racket-wise, swing-wise? Is there anything that you want to spe specifically focus on? Or should we just go through things that we did last time, last week? Sure. Okay, all right. So let's, let's look into the, just the, the, the basic difference in how how you adjust your swing and and what is the situation to to do it for so so normally when this when we cut down the swing when we're using less swing the the, the most common reason is that there's not enough time which kind of like it is equal to having the ball that is very low because when you don't have time it means you're late when you're late the ball is about to bounce for the second time and that's the floor contact. So, so when the ball is, let's say, way below your knee level and you are kind of like reaching out for it, going into those shots like this, it very often gives you very limited options to hit the ball uh, because the big swing needs more space and needs more time. Uh, and, and just look at the tactical side of these things. When you're late, what you normally want to do is to create some time for yourself to return and get back to the team. So just learning to kind of like automatically bring the racket lower and more towards the ball, bring your arm there, is a very, very good thing. The bad thing about it is that it, it, it takes away the hard shot for most people. There are very few people that have a, just with the wrist flick, they can hit the ball very hard, but most of us can't. Um, so that kind of like the, um, um, narrows down the possibilities, but also for your opponent to read you. So they know that you're not hitting the ball 200 miles per hour, what, what you normally do. Uh, but it doesn't mean that they kind of like get easy access to the ball, as long as you, you use a good variation. So, so when, you're, when you're at the front, and this mostly happens, well, it's not actually true. It's only happens at the front. It happens at the back as well. Uh, but let's talk about the situation when the ball is in front of you and you're reaching out for it. So you're going to the ball like this. And I'm just doing uh, the example on the, uh, on the backhand side. So, um, so I'm going like this. So what can I do with this? I can just push and play a drop shot, which, which very often is an is a, is a okay choice. But it really depends on how, how well you can get out of the ball so it doesn't become a stroke situation. And also that, that even if it's not a stroke, that you do have access to the T point and you're kind of like okay to cover the next shot. Because if you're still in the corner after you drop shot, the other guy doesn't really have to do too much to outplay you because you pretty much did it yourself. Uh, so very often with these situations, it's good to start to learn to get under the ball 
and, and learn that, that little bit of use of wrist. And, and it often people think like it's something that you need a lot of power, but it's definitely more technique than power. Because when you play the ball slow, uh, you don't need a very strong arm. The racket needs to be quite open. So there has to be a certain fixation in the wrist area. And then kind of like getting that, that height on the front wall will give you, uh, will, will give you the, the shot uh, that will push your opponent to the back of the court. So let's start doing the, the uh, cross-court lob on the backhand side with the movement to it. So if you have space, let's take, take two or three steps towards the ball, let the racket lead so that there can be a little bit of backswing, but try to make it very horizontal movement. And then if you see that when I step down or I bring my upper body low, my technique is exactly the same. So I'm not changing anything here in my arm or racket. It's the upper body that kind of like gives me the right height that brings me under the ball. And then I use the flick and a little follow through to lift the ball up. So let's practice that. Step in, lift it up. And imagine the ball hanging in the air about a foot high and that you go completely under it. So your racket is very close to the floor. And now you can see the, the link to the movement that we just did with the warm up that you touch the floor, you touch the toe. That's the reason. So you get that low without losing your balance. And then when you're there, you lift your arm up. Okay. Let's keep doing this on the backhand side for another 30, 40 seconds. And, and if you both bring your camera a little bit lower, I can take a look at the, the movement of the racket as well. Since we are with a small group and you're both inside, so it's a very similar situation, yeah. So you, what you wanna do here is there's a little bit of acceleration in the racket head, just like in a general shot. So you come slowly in and there's a little bit of acceleration there. And that should bring the ball all the way to the back, yeah. So focus on the racket head speed. So it's, it's higher in the middle of the swing, slowly under the ball, little acceleration, slow, fast, yeah. So the racket head needs to be faster while having contact with the ball than your hand. And now I look at you both and I feel like you're both doing a little bit too much this. Looks like this, see this? So now if you look at this slow motion, my racket is exactly on the same speed as my hand. And what I'm talking about is to come and approach the ball from here and do this. You see that the racket head is a little bit faster than the hand. So there's a little difference there, but that often brings the ball in a good height and the lob that goes over your opponent. Let's see again. Yeah. So less hand, more racket head. Good. Yeah, and imagine that the ball needs to hit the front wall high. So that's where your arm and racket are going as well. Under the ball, up. Under the ball, up. Okay, stop for a second. Let's, um, I wanna try one more thing just to make the point very clear. Um, if you put your hand on the racket head like this, racket face, and now do, can you do this drumming? Okay, so try to do it the way that you really feel like a, a, a harder contact with, the, with the, your hand. That was my watch. Okay, can you make it harder? So look at my racket going all the way here. So there's, there's almost a foot distance. Yes, okay, that's what I wanna see in the swing, this. So there's a little bit more of a, of a tick. Okay, try again. Let's do a couple, uh, 15 more.
Good. The racket head, show me. Good, good, good. Racket head, it needs to be, you're not using power, but there has to be a bit of a flick in the racket head. So you control that with your wrist. Good. Again. Nice, that was good. Nice, Laura. And Abraham, yeah, good. Okay, good. Let's move to the other side. So same on the forehand. So I'm approaching the ball like this. And the more you bring your racket forward, the closer it is to the ball. So it's a fine tool for a drop shot, like a counter drop shot, just to push the ball like this. You don't need a swing. Bad news or the, the uh, disadvantage is your opponent pretty much sees what's happening because from here, there's not much you can do. If you approach the ball like this, you still see that there's a bit of space between the racket head and the ball on front of you. So you can use an acceleration. That's what we did last week. So we did this movement. Remember that little flick cross court, across the court? So now we do the same flick, but it's not going across the court, but it's going over your opponent. Same idea, same movement. So there's a bit of a wrist involved here. It's a different wrist sensation. It's less pronated on the, on the forehand side than it's on the backhand. Okay, so you go under the ball, flick it up, lift it up. Good. Yeah, that looks good. You both have a little bit more racket head speed on the forehand side. Okay, keep going. And activate the footwork. Make sure that your lunge is kind of good, strong, low lunge, because the ball is slow. You don't play this shot, just for the fun of it. You need that time. So you want to go under, you lift it up. You want to go under, you lift it up. You want to go under, lift it up. Under, lift it up. Good. Let me take a look. Yeah. And up. Yeah, and try to let the racket lead, Abraham. So your arm and racket on front of you clearly way like this. So you're not going to a drop shot like this because the ball is way lower uh, on front of you. So bring your body low for the lunge, racket forward, and then you lift it up. Yes, great, Laura. That's a good forehand lob technique there. Looks good. Abraham, yeah. Lift the ball up. Okay, good. Let's, um, I see that you have a limitation in space, obviously. Um, <laughs> it's easy to say when you're on the squash court. Um, so let's do the two different uh, uh, lobs, uh, front court lobs uh, in, in alternation. So we go to the backhand first, lift it up, come back, then the forehand. And we do the first minute on a medium pace. It just gets used to the movement. And then we do a little bit faster, more uh, aggressive lunge in the second minute, okay? So let your racket lead the way. So when you go to the front, if I show it to you from the, let's say that the ball is here about, well, let's use this one. That's the ball. So it's about foot high. So when I'm, when I'm getting in there, this is how I get in. I can't go like this. Okay, so my, I, when I start to lunge and bring my upper body forward, I'm also extending my arm. The racket head depends on how much time I have. If I'm really late, I'm like this. So I probably only just get a push. If I have a little bit more time, my racket head is more here. So I get a little bit of that flick that we practice. And then I go up. So you see how low the position is and how that's why I, I'm able to get the ball really high on the front wall, and that buys me time to get back to the tee. Okay, so in turns, backhand, forehand, lob uh, at the front. Okay, first minute, go. And remember to alternate with your feet as well. Feel that racket head speed 
a tiny acceleration just before you have contact with the ball. Also good to focus on is your balance. Just when you're about to have that contact, make sure you stand still. Balance, shot. Balance, shot. <laughs> Try to bring that racket very low. Okay, so next minute we do the same, but now I want you to go a little bit faster, a little bit more aggressive down, okay? So we need to get that heart rate up, all right? Go. One, two, one, two, one, two, one. Ah, go low. And come back up quickly. Use your strong legs to push yourself back to the T. And then lunge, T. Lunge, T. Oh, come on, guys. And time. Good. Grab some water. So, this is probably one of the most valuable shots that you can possess in squash when, when being in an uh, under pressure situation especially mid court and front court, uh, being able to use that third level of the front wall. So the first level would be until the service line and then since we are here, <laughs> so the first level is here and then you divide the top, the wider top part in two. So you're here. So anything above my racket, if you get to that area with that lob, it's automatically going to have an arc that's going to be so high that your opponent is forced to move backwards from the tee. And that's only possible when, when your approach is not like this, like often I see both of you also go like this to those lower balls, and then you always have a downswing first. And very often that downswing forces you or doesn't allow you to get really under the ball. So what happens is the ball, the racket comes down. If here's the ball, the racket comes down. And just when you have contact, you cannot get the ball go upwards. It goes more straight. But if you start already on the height of the ball, or even better, lower than the height of the ball, you almost automatically start to lift the ball up. And as your goal is to get that top part, that's, that's what you need to do. Okay, uh, next one, we're gonna go a big swing uh, on the backhand and forehand in terms. So we're gonna go big swing, meaning big swing, meaning arm is, is lifted up, elbow is at least on the height of the shoulder, on both sides, big swing, and then big lunge, and big shot. Uh, between the shots, we are lifting uh, our knees, so it's a knees up, knee raise, and when I say left, you go to the backhand, when I say right, you go to the forehand. Uh, sorry, I say backhand, forehand, that's better, <laughs> because we have lefties and righties. All right, let's start with the knees up. Start getting that heart rate up. Let's see. 
knees. Going up. Left. Right. Right. Left. Right. Left. Right. Left. Right. And we move smoothly to deep squats, jumps. So try to bring your racket all the way to your toes. Jump. And I say left, big swing left. I say right, big swing right. Okay, let's go. Left. Right. Good. Going. Left. Right. Left. Right. Left. Right. And time. Good. Okay. Get a sip of water. Grab your towel. Okay, gonna go straight down to the floor. We're gonna start with some uh, push ups. So make sure you have your knees covered. At least if you have a hard surface, I think you both have hard surface. So put something soft underneath the knees. And so when you do these slow-mo push-ups, it's really about the control uh, of the middle midsection. So you're not going up like this. You're not leaning with your hip forward. Keep it nice and tight. Elbows in. And if you go a little bit further forward, you get a little bit different kind of sensation. If you go way lower, you get it more on your shoulders. So you really kind of like have to find what do you want and what, what feels okay for you. So keep your, bring your feet up and here we go. Slow down, slow up. Slow down, slow up. Uh, yep, I know. And turn your back. 
elbow to knee alternation. And here you can do different things. You can also keep your, only your upper body going, or you can keep only your legs going, or you do both, which is the, the tough combination. If you do the rotation with your upper body when the elbow goes up, make sure your shoulder blade comes loose from the ground. Keep going, come on. And back to plank. So now the abs are a little bit warmed up. So we can continue with the reptile. So again, knee and elbow connection, just a different form. Go. Stay strong. Okay, come up. Tunnel skating, so lateral jump, upper body low, touch the toe. Any more seconds? Core tight, guys. And deep squat jump. Whew, touch the floor. seconds. Come on, guys. Gaze up. Lunges, alternation, lunge, toe touching, each side, go. Remember when you start lunging, bring your upper body forward. Get more reach, more balance. I try to touch the ground, front of your foot, without losing balance. Stretching those glutes, 
Lower back, hamstrings. Good works. Good, good, good. Nice. Knees up. Come on, guys. Lift it. Hop, hop, hop. Woo. Good. Back to the lunge. That's the floor. Work on the balance. As fast as you go forward, make sure you come back very, very quick. Oh, yeah. That's the work, guys. This is what we need to get to those balls. This is the preparation for those lob positions. Nothing better than the feeling when your opponent plays a great low shot and you move oh. forward and barely can get to the ball oh. with extended arm, racket in front of you. They think you scramble and play a drop or something short, but they move forward. And with that little flick of the racket head, your ball goes all the way sideways, guys. Oh, sorry, no, deep squat, deep squat. And the ball flies over their head, and you just look at them looking at the ball like, I can't do anything with that. That's the way you come out of trouble. But you need that body to get into that position, right? So we gotta work on it. Gotta work on these legs, this core, abs, back muscles, strong glutes, a lot of stretching, the whole package. Ooh, come on. Ooh. Ooh. Sideways. Ah. Start to feel the legs, right? Man. Try to touch the toes. Keep it low. Keep it low. It's a tunnel. Head down. Upper body low, guys. Work on your back muscles here. Ooh. Okay, on your back. Elbow to knee. You know the drill. Ooh. Good job. You don't have much left. Doing good. Ooh. 
Burn those abs. Oh, come on. And plank position, reptile. Oh. Okay, ready? And go. Keep it going. Oof. Oof. And slow motion push up, just like we started. And go. You can do this. We can do this together. Come on, guys. Bite the pain. Bite the pain. Okay, come up. I'm almost there. Deep squats. Come on. Touch the floor. Let those legs work. Come on, guys. Airborne and frog, bird and a frog. Keep your head up, bum down. Okay, speed up the last 30 seconds, speed it up. Faster pace, give it all. Give it all, all the way, guys. Oh, come on, faster, harder, match ball. Are you getting that ball? Are you getting it? Play that lob. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Woo! All right, nice push. Ah, oh, great job.